Welcome to the Sports Booth Super Rugby Pacific Round 1 Review. Kick straight into it. First game of the round was the Chiefs versus the Crusaders. 2017 at halftime to the Chiefs ended up being a 33-29 win where we saw a couple of key things. A, to me, the Chiefs, massive loss depending on how bad the McKenzie injury is because we saw the shift happen as he wasn't on the field. He is such a big part of what they're trying to achieve in, in Chiefs country and if they lose him for an extended period of time, Really tough to kind of see if they can maintain that level that we expect from them. Crusaders also having their own injury woes with Tomatai Williams having to go off with a hamstring injury during the game uh, in the early parts of the game, um, which is terrible news for him and the Crusaders. He will be a big part of their building. Saying that, Chiefs kind of delivered what we expected, which is they're a very good team. I think they're the team to beat. Crusaders, to me, actually took a bigger step in the right direction. I'm one of those ones that wrote them off a little bit to the point where I didn't think they would be as good as they are, I think, without Ray's or without Richie. I thought they'd struggle. They showed it in the first half, but then Crusader class, obviously, is still a thing, and the Crusaders managed to come back and just about win that game. And the fact that they just about won it without, you know, with injuries and with everything that's kind of gone on in the off-season, going into the Chiefs country and only losing by four points, it was a bigger result, I think, for the Crusaders to show that they can still compete and show that they're at that level. For everyone, all the doubters like myself as well. A big talking point was at the end of the game um, with the mouth guards and the HIAs that come from those. They've got the smart mouth guards now in rugby to detect if you've had a head knock. Anton Leonard Brown coming off right towards the end of the game, the, the key moments of the game, and all because of a mouth guard signaling that he had had a head knock. To me, it's going to be a learning curve for the players and just everyone involved. Rugby's just facing a lawsuit because of head injuries. This is the way the game's going to go. Eventually, we'll get 100% right. You've just got to live with it, I think, for now, and understand that the reason we're doing this isn't to stop the game or slow the game. It's the best for the game and best for the players. Brumbies beat the Rebels 30-3 to full-time. Um, let's start with the Rebels. Dog shit. Absolutely miserable. One of the worst games to watch. After everything that's happened this offseason, you kind of think the Rebels, they've made a few signings there. They're there. They need to deliver something, show that they deserve to be in this competition, and that's what they put up. I was just, I watched the game, and I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it was just bad. Like, the reason it's so bad is you look at the stats, and I'll, I'll put some of the stats up now. They play very similarly to the Brumbies. Like, the amount of run metres, very similar. Tackles, tackles miss, made and tackles missed. Defenders beat in, I think they just about doubled the Brumbies. But the big thing is they couldn't score, and they just never looked like scoring. They, the one time they did score, they got called back for something stupid. The commentators, you could see the game just going the way it was. Brumbies were quicker at the breakdown, better with the simple stuff, and converted on their opportunities, whereas the Rebels delivered none of that. A lot slower, a lot less... I guess just, just everything. And, and to me, I go, they've got the talent there. You can see it on the stage. Callaway, Leota played really well. Coaching has to be the issue. I don't know what else to say. They, the, the rucks weren't good enough. The, the, the coaching, the, the, the game plan wasn't good enough. They just lacked everything. And I just sat there and I was, as I am such a big supporter of trying to keep the Rebels and trying to keep the Melbourne team base, that was such a fucking disappointing performance. And I just, all I can think about is, you know, like, all of the Super Rugby teams pile with shit, then the Rebels. And that's where they're at at the moment. That's where they've always been. And if this was, a, if there was ever a time to stand up and put your hand up, this was it. And the Rebels just did not, did not deliver on anything. And they've got the players. This is what, Tani Alatubo came on, made an impact. Leota was, I thought, was fantastic. And they, just nothing, absolutely nothing. For the Brumbies, I think they'll... Be happy with the result. I think they can still play better. Like, that was my thing I took away from it. I just sat there and went, this Brumbies team's really, really good. And they could have put 50 on on, on um, the Rebels if they were if they were completely firing. So, again, I think I've underranked the Brumbies yet again. I think that's Larkham. Noel Olaseo looked really good. But I think they've unearthed another superstar, a future superstar of Australian rugby. Charlie Cale, the number eight. Tall number eight would be over 6'3". Uh, athletic, outran a winger to score a try. He's going to be a superstar. Watch out for that name. Canes dismantled the force in game three. 22-0 at halftime, 44-14 in the second half. Force have to be bitterly disappointed. Home game, you know, the Hurricanes have had to travel all the way over from Wellington, and they didn't really put up much of a fight, especially in that first half. Came back at the start of that second half and then let the Canes run away. 
But I think that's what this Canes team is going to do to a few teams. Like you can just tell with Laidlaw as a coach, you know, Seven's background, they were electric. And when they get going and that momentum goes, they're going to run a lot of teams down. Saying that, I actually believe where the Canes looked the best was a set piece. Lineouts were fantastic. Lineout steals were fantastic. I think they stole six or seven in the end of the force lineout. Dominant in the scrums, and you just sit there and go, that will set up any platform for a good win. And when you've got backs with the name of Barrett, Ruben Love, uh, just to name a few, and Nana Naholo in the back line as well, you're going you're gonna to tear teams apart, and that's exactly what they did. The force also let themselves down with discipline. I think it was about a 16 to 8 penalty count in the end. When you give away double penalties at that level of rugby, you're not going to win the game. Um, and a lot of them, I think, were correct calls. Uh, I don't think it was a bias ref or a poorly ref game. The, the force were just... Just undermanned in a tough outing, which, again, with their signings, when you look at the Rebels, if there was a time to make a statement, it was probably in that first game against the New Zealand side coming over. But New Zealand go one new up in the uh, the cross-conference or cross-country derbies, I guess. Blues hosting the Drura, and they put them away in the first 20-odd minutes. Uh, in the end, they were up 29-3 at a half, uh, finished 34-10, so a good fight back in the second half to show that the Drura... Uh, have got promise, but the big thing with the Drew is always going to be, can they win away, can they perform away, they can't let teams do that to them, they cannot go down 20 minutes when they're, you know, 20 points within 20 minutes of the game, should I say. For the Blues, absolutely clinical stuff, ruthlessness when they got into the 5 metre line, which they kept managing to do, which is really good, because this is a team that can also, you know, with Caleb Clark and Talia on the wing, break out from anywhere, but to be so ruthless uh, five metres out, I thought was fantastic watching the Blues do that. Put some names up why they're contenders. The only thing I think that Blues fans and rugby fans will be disappointed by is the fact that they didn't really put the foot on the throat and destroy this Jura team. You know, they lost the second half. So disappointment there probably for the Blues, but a lot of really good showings from them. Highlanders versus Moana. Uh, a really interesting one. Moana up 18-14 at the half to then lose 35-21. It was a tight affair and it was really good and I think Moana have definitely taken another step in the right direction and I see Moana beating some teams this year and they, they had a chance here. Um, what I would say for Moana especially is patience, 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 patience. There is so much talent on that team, they've just got to be patient. 21 all is score, you're down on their line, you want to build pressure, you want to gain advantages, they go for a crossfield kick, ends up not working and they end up you know, end up a line out just outside their 22 after a turnover and runaway. And I go, if they're patient and they can build phases and build phases, again, I'm, I'm not against the crossfield kick. I, I, I rate it when there's an advantage in play, especially. But you've got to be patient and wait for those moments. I just think there was a couple of times there they rush things. And they'll learn, again, this is a very new side, a um, lot more new numbers, a new coach this year. But they looked really good, and I was really impressed with some of their defence um, up until the last 15 minutes, I think. They they look like a team that will compete like they were in that first season, and they will knock some teams over. Um, so I think you've got to really come prepared. Saying that, there's a man that stood out for me. Julian Savia is going to take this team to leaps and bounds. The, the way he got himself involved at 12, I think 12 is a really good position for him, for this team. The defensive work he did, I just went, that is was impressive. And I, I, I imagine he's going to end up in some international jersey at the end of this year, if it's not the All Blacks, which I, I would be surprised. But again, if he puts his hand up well enough, who knows, um, and there's injuries. But I, I imagine if he's eligible for Samoa and wants to play for Samoa, there's an opportunity for him there. Talking about the Highlanders, they'll be a little bit disappointed because they were, you know, all the talk about them was in the preseason. They had won all those games to be down at half time. Penalties, discipline, again, against a, probably a better team, against the Blues, the Chiefs, the Crusaders, the Hurricanes, even the Brumbies and Reds, I think, those penalties cost them a win there. So they were good enough to fight back, but were they just pretenders in the preseason is kind of the question you have to ask because you go, they didn't deliver on what I was expecting. I was expecting the Highlanders to run, run through Moana after what they'd done in the preseason. And again, looking back again, I'm just going to touch on the Rebels because they're fucking driving me nutty. But as they said it, like, oh, you know, some of the rust's gone. And it's like, well, no, that's, that's what the preseason games are for. You cannot turn up in round one with rust. And it seemed a little bit like that for the Highlanders to me. Last game of the round, State of Origin derby. Reds versus the Tars. Reds, Les Kiss, welcome to the world of Australian rugby. How good is it going to be for them? Uh, I think the Reds are going to look really good from what I've seen, from what the game I just witnessed. 
every single opportunity they had a chance to go for free, they kicked for, for, for the uh, corner, and they scored two rolling moles, scored a lot more tries off that, I think. Les Kiss, what he's doing for this Reds team, is going to take them to another level. I am very fearful of this Reds team now. I, I sit there and I go, if, if their some- playmakers, if Tate McDermott, uh, their first fives, whoever they put in there, they put two young first fives in there um, in this game, and both, to me, impressed. Um, Tom Linner looked really, really good in there, and I go... There is an opportunity for this Reds team with the way Hunter Pasami's playing, that four-pack with Harry Wilson and Fraser McWright to do some real damage. And I go, if I'm a Wallaby supporter, I am so thankful for Les Kiss being now in that in that um, Reds seat. I just think they're, they're going to take another step, all of those Reds players, in a, in, a, in a good direction. Let's talk about the Tars. It's, it's a really hard one because, again, I could say the simple shit let them down, similar to like the Rebels in the Force. But, I, again, look at the stats, and I'll bring them up. A lot, very similar stats in this game. They just didn't convert their opportunities. And when they did get into the right field positions, they, they made poor decisions, I think. And, and, and one big poor decision for me, there was an opportunity kick for the corner. They take a tap, um, pass the ball. Uh, Jake Gordon takes a tap, passes it. Someone kicks for the corner. Jordi Bataille, I don't know what is he trying, but he turns into Cristiano Ronaldo, who's the field downfield, and it's now a line out just outside your 22. And I was like, you had a penalty where you could have kicked for touch on the 22, create a line out and go to work and, you, and they just missed opportunities like that. And I go, everyone's talking about, you know, there was that report that came out, Darren Coleman's got four weeks to get this right. And I go, if he wants to get it right, that was a game they needed to win and they haven't looked good in preseason. They look better, they look more, I guess, dominant and more competitive, but still didn't get the result. They now go Crusaders, Highlanders, I think Blues and then Dura away, and I just go, that, that they were saying it in the commentary team, harder schedule probably to start the season, and they're not wrong. Um, so, look, they've got to deliver on some of those um, performances, beat a couple of those New Zealand teams, or Coleman may face the X. And it's, it's tough because I, saw, I remember witnessing the, you know, the, the 0-12 or whatever it was, Waratahs that didn't win a game in the season. Coleman coming in, revitalising what the Waratahs were and bringing them back into play of contention and now they've kind of just flatlined and, and it's disappointing um, for, for the Waratahs and for the Australian Super Rugby. But yeah, look, lots of good rugby out there. New Zealand team's looking the parts still. I think when you see my power rankings, I think Chiefs and Blues will be up there with the Hurricanes. Um, but let us know what you thought of all the games. Let us know who you thought stood out. Let us know why the Rebels should be disbanded and we should never talk about Rebels rugby ever again because that's the point I'm at now. That's where I'm at. That's what I've got to because of the fucking Rebels. Just watching that game being... I don't even support the Rebels. I don't. I'm a Hurricane supporter. I don't even support... But I want to see them succeed and just watching that, I just was like, oh, that hurt my soul. Hurt my soul. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you haven't, make sure you like and subscribe to us for all your rugby news and sport news on the down low. See you later.